Dr. Speck. Uh, I now turn to Mr. McCall for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I remember uh, Congressman Cuellar and I introduced an amendment to an appropriations bill that passed on the floor. It later became uh, the Merida Initiative. Um, <clears throat> I, I'd like to get, if I could, from our witnesses, just a, a report card on the um, successes and really the status of where we are with the Merida Initiative. In addition, the um, uh, Central American Regional Security Initiative um, and uh, Northern Triangle. Maybe if all three could comment on what is your report card on the effectiveness and what do we need to do more to combat this problem that has not gone away. In fact, some could argue it's gotten worse. Um, I'm not sure about Obrador's strategy in Mexico. I think the cartels are back on the rise in many respects. And it may just be a laissez-faire policy where he doesn't, he just lets them play in the sandbox and then they, they get along. But we're certainly seeing, you know, armored tanks and pretty threatening um, actors uh, south of our border uh, that, that threaten the United States. And so um, maybe if I could go to each of you to get sort of an update and a report card. Great. Thank you for that question, and and I think we'll each take take a part of that. And let me start with uh, the relationship with Mexico and the Merida Initiative. Um, obviously, it's now been in place for over a decade, and it has evolved uh, in the sense of U.S. Uh, policy and support uh, with Mexico, as well as the levels of cooperation uh, and role that that each government has played. Um, I would say over this time period that there have been real successes of the Merida Initiative. We have seen. Uh, the U.S. helped play a, a quite vital role in the transition of Mexico's justice system. Um, they have, over the decade, moved from one that was a one based on uh, written testimonies to one that's more based on an accusatorial system of oral trials and due process and the like. And we do have studies and evaluations that show that the new system, when it has come into place, uh, is one that uh, provides justice uh, in a more timely way. So people, pre-detentions and the like, have, have fallen. Um, it provides, um, many people see a fairer justice. Um, the judges in the court, there is an ability to, to um, have, you know, cross uh, evidence presented and the like. So it's fairer in terms of due process for uh, the defendants that are there. Um, and there is, in many places, a greater satisfaction with the court system and the process of justice um, than there was with the past system among the general public. So I think that is one of the uh, successes of the Merit Initiative. Well, we have also seen uh, significant in several places in Mexico, uh, U.S. support for pilot programs, for community policing, for other means of policing, particularly at the uh, local and the state level, that have also shown some significant promise. Um, but as you say and, and rightly point out, um, the levels of violence in Mexico have not fallen. Uh, the trafficking of drugs has not ended. Uh, it has morphed, <clears throat> as you as you mentioned, uh, to include fentanyl and others um, coming in from the precursors coming in from China and other places. And so the challenges are still there. Uh, part of the challenge is uh, when there's a change in government in Mexico, um, that there are changing priorities. Uh, within their own law enforcement system. And there has been, particularly under the Lopez Obrador administration, a full revamping of the law enforcement agencies within that nation. So we have seen uh, the end of what the federal police that was a partner of the U.S. government in much of the Merida Initiative um, and replacing with a National Guard. We have seen uh, the sidelining of the um, the Navy, they're called the Marines, but that was often the most trusted partner by the U.S. Yeah. Uh, with a rising power with the Army. Uh, and so there has been, and some reluctance, I would say, uh, to engage mm -hmm. on the many different areas um, that past Mexican governments have engaged with the United States. Yeah, and um, I, th I one think thing the Navy have uh, has been very uh, trustworthy. I don't know. Uh, what, how you would rate the National Guard experiment, although I was supportive. I, 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 um, I wouldn't want to completely leave the Navy out because they've done such a great job. CSEN is a very, I think, reliable intelligence partner. Certainly in my uh, Department of Justice days, we saw that. Uh, last question, because my time is expiring. All these fentanyls coming in from China, 
it, uh, for them, them, it's a great foreign policy. They make a lot of money off this, and they kill Americans. They poison our children. Um, it's coming into this hemisphere, primarily into Colombia and Mexico. Uh, how, can we st how can we possibly stop this? This is becoming the number one death threat in the United States. I mean, I think as you mentioned in, in your earlier opening comments, this is something between the United States and China. Um, there is a, uh, there should be uh, a stronger effort to stop the uh, precursors from leaving China itself. But this is also an issue, particularly for U.S. and Mexico. Um, we have seen under the Lopez Obrador administration, the army take over management of the ports. And it does look like most of the flows of those precursors come in through the ports. So it again is an issue for the law enforcement uh, cooperation between the two countries. And as we look toward a new Merida initiative, because I think we need a, a revamp of it, and the Mexicans are calling for that as well, um, this should be one of the main issues uh, on the table for discussion. That's, that's, that's um, a very and good will... takeaway. Yeah, a, a new Merida initiative that includes this. Um, I, I apologize, yes. but my time has expired. I yield back. Mr. Chairman, um, because uh, that question I thought was pretty